Hi, this is Mark Kemper with EMS, and in this video, we're going to use this 3D scanner to inspect this part, but we are not going to do 3D scanning. Okay, so what's the catch? What do I mean by we're going to use a 3D scanner but not do 3D scanning? Well, we're going to not use the 3D scanner in its traditional sense of basically using the lasers to pick up the 3D shape of the part. So let me explain a little uh, further. This scanner along with, in this, ca in this case, we've got the uh, HandyScan Black uh, uh, Elite, but a lot of the Creaform scanners um, use targets and some of them that don't even requires targets like the go scan and the peel can still use targets. So what we want to do is we want to use targets only when we scan for inspection. Now, why would we do that? Well, if you look at this, this is a, this is a grill for a, for, a, for a truck, for a vehicle. And let's say we're more in a production facility or, or sorry, production environment or facility. And we just want to be able to do quick scans on parts, especially parts that maybe be able to flex or move. So, you know, maybe in this state it's fine, but the minute we mount it up on the vehicle, um, it may get torqued or flexed or with another assembly of parts. Now, we could target it up and then we could 3D scan the whole thing, but, you know, 3D scanning a part like this, which has lots of nooks and crannies, the backside has a ton of information, and we've actually have this part in another video you can go watch and just see how much detail. You know, it's going to take 10, 15, 20 minutes to do a really good job. Now you could do a quick scan uh, of just some key areas. You could certainly do that, but you could also just scan the targets and use that for your inspection. So that's what we're gonna do today. I'm gonna, I'm gonna scan the targets only, put that in a file, and then I'm gonna basically torque the part and do it again and we can compare. So let me get set up and, and we'll get into this. Um, so what we do in the software over here, normally we would hit the scan button. I'm going to come in here and say scan position targets, okay? And then I'm going to go ahead and click the scan button. Now the advantage of that is it's super fast. The lasers don't even turn on, okay? Just the LEDs to pick up the, the targets. So, and I'll, normally I would stand over there, but just so you can see, I'm going to go ahead and turn it on. And you can see just how fast... I can pick up these targets. And I have the targets in key spots, key surfaces, kind of along edges, staggered. So I, you know, I put the targets in a, you know, very specific spots. And also they make targets uh, on like posts that will fit into like a certain size hole. So let's say you had a bunch of holes, you could drop these in there. They're basically uh, kind of like a, a go, no go type uh, uh, plug with a target on it. You can fit that in there and quickly look at positioning of holes. But I have these on key surfaces here. And if you come look at the file, you can see it's just a bunch of targets. Now, what is, you know, what can I do with that? So let's go ahead and stop the scan. And we're going to export positioning targets. And I'll do all of them. And we will just call this uh, truck grill. Okay. And if we go look at that file, you can see what it is here. It's IJ, it's a XYZ. So what it does is it captures the center point of that target and then the normal vector from that center. So depend, you know, depending on what angle that target is sitting at, you're going to get this normal vector out. Kind of like a point cloud if you're familiar with that. Long range hemispherical type scanners just collect points and so do some other scanners. So now what we basically have here is you know 40 50 60 points however many we want and we just have the center of that point and then that vector okay so we've stored that in a file 
Now I'm going to torque the, the part and scan it again. And we can automate this. So let's say we're using a product like Polyworks and we want to do a bunch of these, you know, we could automate this, this process, okay? So that it brings in the first scan, brings in the second scan, quickly compares them, gives us deviation. But let's, um, let me get this set up. I'm gonna kind of use a, 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 some fixturing here to kind of torque the part and then we'll go ahead and scan it again. All right, so now we're set up to take our second scan. And what I've done is I've really torqued the part I'm kind of lifting it up there and here, and then I'm clamping it down over here. So we're probably exaggerating how much it might um, actually be, uh, you know, uh, 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 you know, out of shape. But with a scanner like the HandyScan Black, this will, you know, this has an accuracy of one thousandths of an inch. So even slight deviations, you know, we're definitely going to be able to pick up with this scanner. And you know, what we're trying to do here is maybe look at this part through different stages, right? So, you know, it might get checked on a, a gauge or a tool or a checking fixture in, in perfect body uh, position, and that all checks out. You do your flush and gap checks. But now we're gonna assemble it with a bunch of different parts at different stages and maybe put it on the vehicle, and that's where maybe things could go wrong. So, you know, if we put these targets on and leave them on through these different stages, you know, we can check every point along the way and see what's happening to this part. Is it deforming, to, you know, or, or something going on? So, so, and again, this is all about speed. We can do this very, very quickly as opposed to trying to, you know, 3D scan the whole part and then load in a huge scan file and all that. So again, we're all set up. We've just set up a new, uh, a new uh, session here because we've, we've exported the original file. And again, the you know, 3D scanning of targets is extremely fast, okay? You just kind of move around, the, the lasers don't come on, as I mentioned, it's just the LEDs and then the cameras you know, picking it up. And again, having these targets in kind of specific locations is gonna let me you know, basically see what I'm looking for, you know, the different surfaces I wanna, you know. So we only really need targets on you know, surfaces that we you know, are, are interested in. Okay, so that's it. So then I stop and what we'll do next is go into the, the software and you know, take a look at the two different files and maybe look at where some of the deviation uh, is. Okay, so now I have imported the uh, points into Geomagic Design X. Now, normally you would probably take this into some inspection software, but I thought I would bring it in here just to kind of show what we could do, even just some manual measurements. So what we have here is the, the, the one point cloud or the targets really. Um, and you can kind of see it here on its side. Now for reference, I went ahead and just did a really quick scan just so you can understand where those points are, right? But again, those are all those targets. And this is just a very crude scan just so visually you can see it. But again, normally we wouldn't have to do that. So there is the, uh, the points uh, on the, the normal position. And then here are the points after we bent it. And as you zoom in, you can kind of start to see some of the differences. Now, again, I did a quick scan in that bent position. And then let's bring back the normal position. So you can definitely see how one kind of, the, the uh, green kind of passes through the, the blue here. Um, after we bent it, you can certainly see it over here. Uh, but again, I, normally I wouldn't do any of this scanning. So I could bring these two uh, uh, sets of points in and then even just do some manual measurements, okay? And you could have the CAD in here for reference if you wanted. Uh, but what we'll do is I'll just do a point-to-point -point measurement. And, you know, I could come in here and pick any two points and see the difference. Now, we really exaggerated, you know, that bend. So, you know, you can see that's a, a five, a four millimeters and and this one's 2.8, and it gets worse out towards the ends here. Five, you can see that one is 19. So we could come out, you know, and, and just do some quick manual measurements uh, on any two given points just to see what's going on, okay? And then the other thing we can do with this is do another measurement, but this time we'll do a mesh deviation. Um, Target will be the, let's make that the bent, and the reference would be the regular position. And we can get a color code map this way, and we can adjust, you know, what, what's a good tolerance for us, let's say on a one millimeter. So what, you, what you'll notice here is uh, the red is up in this area. That's where we kind of bent it, uh, you know, up. And then over here in the blue, it, it's going to the negative, right? So that that 
that uh, makes sense based on how we torqued or bent the part, right? So again, we can kind of see a trend here. And if you highlight over uh, these, you'll get the actual measurements. So this one's within, you know, 0.07 mils and 0.4 mils. But then as we get out here, 9, 11. So we can definitely see the trend. It's too high in one direction here and too low in another direction here, which is exactly what, you know, we did when we kind of deformed the part. And I'll lay it up on its side again and, you know, bring those meshes back and you can kind of see that, okay? But again, we could quickly get some measurements here um, without having to do a whole lot of scanning and just see, you know, where everything is. And again, you could bring the CAD model in here for reference or, or an existing scan, um, but, but we're just taking the, uh, you know, we're just bringing in the points. So it's very, very fast. And then if you're using inspection software, as I mentioned earlier, you can automate the process, have it generate, you know, nice fancy reports or printouts, um, again, with some scan or CAD data as reference and just see, uh, you know, what that looks like. Uh, you could measure back to the original CAD with a set of points or like what we're doing here, which is just point to point measurement. So this wraps up the video on 3D scanning targets only to do some quick inspection. Now, if you want to learn more, maybe get an online uh, web demo or meet a person, uh, in the description below is a link to a quick contact form. Uh, you can just put your name, email, phone number, and we can get in touch with you and find out more about what you're trying to do and see if we have a solution to help you out.